You'll never be happy unless you get the right kitchen in your RV. We have some great tips for you next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz and this is Paul. These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you will certainly live amazing if you get an RV with the right kitchen. That's right. I've actually had eight RVs. I'm on my eighth camper and I've had everything from a camper van to fifth wheels to travel trailer, you name it. There are some things to look for when you're looking at kitchens, some things that could make or break your life in the RV world because boy, if you don't have the right kitchen, that's something you're going to be dealing with every day. Think about your own home and your own kitchen and how important that is to you, the counter space and and the appliances that you use on a regular basis and try to try to project that forward into the RV. Right, and you know, there are some manufacturers who seem clueless about how to camp and how a kitchen is used. And I know that I've seen people struggle with that on the road. And then there are some other manufacturers that are waking up and realizing what makes a good kitchen. So we're gonna talk about different layouts and it and although we are in a a fifth wheel we'll definitely cover class b's and camper vans and smaller areas as to what makes a good kitchen no matter what size the rv and we're doing a giveaway that's right you could win this kona french press by idyllic homes we will give you details later in the video let me have it <laughs> The stove is super important. Every RV has one, and of course you need it to cook. Now I have seen, even in the largest RVs, a big mistake made by the manufacturers. Always look for counter space next to the stove. Believe it or not, some manufacturers don't do that. You need to have space to put a plate or a cutting board, that sort of thing. Now stoves come recessed or raised. If you're looking at a smaller camper, a travel trailer, or a camper van, you need a recessed stove because then they have the counter that flips down on top of it and you get extra counter space. The downside of the recessed stoves though is that you often can only get a couple pans in. Even though you have three burners, you can generally only use two and sometimes even one. So our stovetop has raised grates and the importance of that is the ability to get more than one large frying pan on the stove at a time. If you're looking at, at a fifth wheel or a big travel trailer, by all means find one with a raised cooktop. You won't be sorry. If you're looking for a smaller camper, a travel trailer, a camper van that's say under 25 feet, you will find ovens in some. I recommend that you don't get an oven because at that size, you're gonna need the cabinet space. I'm a baker, I love having an oven. Our oven's a convection oven. Just know that it's not like cooking at home even if you have a gas oven at home. We find that it takes longer for things to cook, longer for things to brown. In our version, we don't have a top burner, so it does take a while. The gasket on these is a kind of flimsy compared to what you're used to in your home. So a lot of the newer rigs have just done away with the oven entirely and do a convection oven. Honestly, we have never used the convection part of it. If you happen to have a convection oven in your rig, let us know how you like it and what it's good for. Well, you definitely want to get the biggest fridge that you can find, particularly if you're looking at a smaller trailer or camper van, because every time that you need to go to the store and get more food, it means breaking camp. Now, when I was solo, I found an eight cubic feet fridge was fine for just one person. If you are looking at a camper van, make sure that you get a separate door for the freezer. Those tend to be a better use of space. Our current fridge is 18 cubic feet. That's more than enough for two people. It's plenty so that we can stock up and not have to go to the store often. This is a two-way, so it works on propane as we're driving down the road, electric plugged in. You do have the option of going with a residential fridge, but Keep in mind that if you do go that route, you're gonna to have to have a place to plug it in all the time. Um, they do not run on propane, so you would have to have either a generator running when you, want, when you weren't hooked up to shore power, or a solar panel array and, and batteries and an inverter to, to keep them going. But they are more efficient, and um, so there you go. Double sinks are really nice, especially on smaller rigs. 
because counter space is king. If you're in something like a camper van, you actually can cover one of the sinks and you can be using that for cutting and then you still have one of your sinks available. The other thing to look for in a sink is depth. When Paul and I looked at class A's that were like 10 years old, they had ridiculously shallow sinks that just were not usable for washing big pots. If you do a lot of cooking, pots, pans, crock pots, instapots, that sort of thing, you do need a deep sink. And it makes it nicer because it keeps the splashing inside. If you are looking for an island like we have, we love our island, but there is a downside. And that is that there's no backsplash. And there's a reason why they call it a backsplash. When you wash, the water will go over the edge of the counter. So just be aware of that. This unit had an optional dishwasher and we said no to that because we wanted the extra cabinet space. We travel with large appliances. We have an Instapot, a big blender, a stock pot. As a matter of fact, I will put a link in the comments to our favorite appliances. Now, the other thing about getting the dishwasher installed would be in this unit, the dishwasher actually opens up at the end of the counter. So it's not near the sink for loading it. It seemed to be kind of a pain in the I really cannot see any pluses to having a dishwasher on the road. If you have one, let us know if you like it. I'm curious because I've always had a dishwasher growing up. I've had a dishwasher in every house I've lived in, but I just don't think on the road it's that necessary. Since we do hand wash our dishes, or should I say Paul does the dishwashing, we have a space saving microfiber dish rack that we love, and I'll put a link to it in the comments. When you're looking at RVs, storage is an important thing to be looking for. Uh, make sure the cabinets go all the way to the top. We had a reflection that had cabinets that only went about three quarters of the way up and they had a huge um, wasted space above them. They corrected this mistake and they actually have the cabinets that go all the way to the top now. I really like how Grand Design did the kitchens. I really like how the cabinets are angled. There's definitely not any wasted space. There's just cabinets all over the place and there's drawers. Drawers are really handy in this life and there are plenty of those. Now, if you've never RV'd before, you may wonder how do you keep your stuff from flying all over the place when you're driving down the road? Well, I like this kind of contact paper that uses no adhesive and I'll put a link to it in the comments. So yes, you wanna line your shelves and your drawers of anything breakable so that things aren't gonna go flying everywhere. Lighting is really important in the kitchen and Grand Design did it right where there was a lot of lighting. There's under cabinet lighting, there's lots of overhead lighting, and there's even decorative lighting. The thing about an RV kitchen is you actually need extra light than you would in your house. And this is because almost all the countertops have a cabinet over them and so the kitchens can tend to be dark. I recommend under cabinet lighting, but if you don't find that in the RV you're looking for, I have a link below to some stick up lights that you can put on the cabinets. Whatever you're looking at, you wanna make sure you've got enough outlets and they're in the right places. Adding one, you could do it, but it's going to be a hassle. So we haven't talked about flooring, and of course you need to have something that's easy to take care of in your kitchen. Believe it or not, one of the campers I had had carpet in the kitchen, and this is because it was an older camper van. So you may wanna have to replace that like I did, or put something over it because you do not want carpet there. So generally your options are on the newer rigs is that you will find vinyl floor, vinyl plank, or even tile or heated tile floors, which is super nice. Okay, so I don't drink coffee. I just wanna be upfront about that, but Paul is a coffee snob, right? <laughs> he really likes his coffee. And from what I understand, if you love coffee, then the French press is the way to go. It is. I have tried pretty much every method out there for making coffee and I always come back to the French press. And how long have we been using the idyllic homes this, French press? This one I've been using for a little over a month and uh, I love it. It's, it's, it's As French presses go, it's as good as they get. Here's how you can enter to win the Kona French Press by Idyllic Homes. First of all, you need to be a subscriber to win, so push on the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get notifications. Then go into the comments and write coffee. We will take all the entries and pick one out of a hat to win. The full details and rules are in the description. The contest ends on May 20th, and you may already win because 
Idyllic Homes is offering a deep discount to our viewers and if you look in the description below, you'll find the code that you'd use. So good luck. And if we have missed anything as far as kitchen layouts, also write in the comments any tips you have for us. And if you like this video, you'll love the next one. We'll see you in the next video.